All right, so today is going to be a grip strength workout. I know this is like all I've been posting lately, but um, I've been really focused on training my hands because I've noticed in my climbing that my hands are my limiting factor. I, I can pull 185 pounds attached to me during a pull-up on a bar. But whenever I get to a, a smaller ledge, um, my hands just can't keep, keep up with my pull strength. So there's an imbalance there. And just from like a month of specific grip strength training, I'm like a grade and a half stronger. Um, like the other day, just to verify that, I was, you know, I've climbed V8s in the gym before, but I wanted to see what, uh, how my strength was feeling like on an all rounded level. Like usually whenever, if you've ever been to a climbing gym, they'll set, and you've been going there for a while and you're like a member. The reason I say that is because uh, you get used to the routes there. And so on a weekly basis, if you're at a good gym, they usually set new stuff. So you get a whole new set from like usually V0 all the way up to sometimes V10. And sometimes the V8s, that's about where I'm at right now. I've, I've sent some V9s, but I'm not a consistent V9 climber. I would say I'm a fairly consistent V8 climber, at least at my gym. And uh, sometimes it would take me a little while to get the V8s. So the other day I did a challenge where I wanted to climb every V8 in succession that is set at the gym. So they're all repeats, but I just wanted to verify that I still had the strength to climb them all in one set. I did seven out of eight V8s and um, I felt really strong. So that was kind of like just a, a check mark baseline to see if I was considered, I, I would consider myself a V8 climber. Uh, and I think that's a fair assessment. So uh, usually I would struggle on the V8s, but this time I was like flashing them, which means getting them first try and just feeling really good because of my hand strength. So I'm gonna continue to focus on my hand strength, especially because this Saturday, today is Thursday. This Saturday I'm going to Rocktown to try some staple outdoor climbing and see if I can send some V8s out there. Uh, I got my eye on a couple of them. But today I'm going to be doing a grip strength specific workout. I've changed a few things from the last one that I did. I've built some equipment, so I'll show you what I use, but I'm gonna stick with the same warm up I did last time, which is the forearm flexor and extensors, which is just this roly poly machine. So 45 pound plate on here, just to warm up the forearms and get some circulation in my hands. So I'll do like 50 or 60 reps of this. Um, about three times and then I'll go into the actual workout and sometimes I'll jump back and forth between this just to get a little more pump in my forearms because this this is more of a stamina and pumpy workout rather than a grip strength strength workout and yeah so I'll do 50 reps of this and not even really just strict reps it's just to get the blood flowing and, and feel really good in my hands I'll flip it around. I don't know if that was 50 reps. It probably was like 30, but flip it around. Get a nice pump going through the arms and uh, that'll be my warm up. So I'll do this a couple times and then I'll take you into the actual workout. All right, so this is the newest creation that I've made. Let me move this light over. So this is a, I called this a crimp on social media. Like I shared this little design on Instagram. And I called this a crimp, like a massive crimp, but nobody agreed with that. And I can see why. Um, the reason I called it a crimp is because my hand is like basically full crimp when I use this. My thumb is actually engaged on it as well. This is just a hold from atomic hold of from their uh, system training uh, products that they sell. Attached to a piece of wood with some hooks and Sure, it's sketchy as heck, because I don't know the load bearing capacity of these hooks when they're on a piece of wood with screws that I got from Walmart. But you know, we run with it. And so I just bolted a hold to this. I actually put a set screw in there as well, make sure it holds. Um, but it's a mini jug, we'll call it a mini jug. And you can see it's very uh, friendly on the fingers. It has no texture. It's just basically like a hard piece of clay, you could call it. Um, and I like that because it allows me to use my fingers even after a hard climbing session when my fingers are very raw. Um, and the reason I like using this more than a hangboard is because I can 
put my hands in a very neutral position. So as I pick up the dumbbell, my hands are down. When my hands are above me, I feel like there's very poor circulation, especially when you're very pumped and uh, you're, you're tired and your hands are above you, so it's harder to get blood to your forearms. When your hands are down here, I just, you know, I don't know the exact science behind it, but I just feel, and it could be a placebo effect, but I feel like my arms are getting better circulation. Uh, I know that farmer's walks are extremely good for grip strength, but using a bar. And so I, basically the same concept with this. Um, think of it as a hangboard, but you're holding it down um, instead of up. And this allows you to actually change the weight as well. So uh, I can progress and measure the weight that I'm using. So I've been using, uh, I started with 50 pounds uh, earlier uh, this month when I first started doing these. And then I've gone up to 60 pounds and 60 pounds feels really friendly. Um, I think I can hold 60 pounds for like a full minute with these mini jugs. And I'm trying to just make sure my tendons become stronger without you know, overloading them too much. So I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, max out with this. I would rather extend the duration and make it more of a stamina intensive strength that has a residual strength aspect to it because there is progressive overload with this. So as I break the, like I'm almost to the point where I'm gonna use 70 pounds because I don't think holding it longer than a minute, one, it's really boring, two, uh, you know, if I can, cut it down to 45 or like 30 or 45 seconds at a heavier weight. I would rather do that because I don't like working out for very long. Um, I like making it as efficient as possible and getting the work in, but also feeling good in the process. So again, uh, progressive overload. I started with 50, now I'm at 60 and I'm already feeling myself breaking that threshold. But this has been a game changer for my grip strength, like absolute game changer. Um, it's because it specifically puts the weight directly on my hands and I, it's just this hold in particular is one that I picked out online. I was just searching through their system holds again, atomicclimbing.com, not sponsored by them, not affiliated with them. I bought everything outright that I have from them. I bought a lot of products from them, but I think they make really good training holds and training equipment. And so, uh, this one I spotted because I wanted to engage all of my hands in an ergonomic way, which means instead of like a hangboard where you have a flat ledge, this is more of rounded. So you can crimp in a very natural position. And like this position here is where I want to keep my hand. And what I've actually found while doing these exercises that, you know, if my wrist is in extension, so a little bit back, then um, I don't feel like that applies to climbing as much as it would if I force my wrist forward, because then I feel all the tendons engage in the middle of my hand down into my wrist and then down into my forearm, whether, and if I'm in extension, all I feel it is like the tips of my fingers and in my forearm, it kind of eliminates the wrist flexion, if that makes sense. So like my hands like this, I don't feel it as much, but if I force my fingers forward into a flex position, I feel like, especially in training, you may not want to do that all the time when climbing, but for training and trying to gain the connection between my fingers and my forearms so I can activate that strong pull strength that I have, I want to make that connection. So I'm, uh, as I get warmed up, so I'll do a regular set of just natural position hold. So that just means however my hand feels the most comfortable. And that's kind of like in between flexion and extension. It's like right in the neutral position. I'll do a warm up set like that and I'll just hold it as long as I can or, you know, roughly 45 seconds ish. And uh, that'll be my warm up set because I don't want to like overload myself and do too many of these just because training your tendons, you need to spend a long time training them in order to avoid injury and uh, just progress in a very natural and, and long state because I want long lasting results that, you know, uh, stay with you for a very long time rather than uh, trying to just pull as hard as I can, get the results super fast with the potential risk of setting myself back by popping a tendon or pulling or doing something silly because I've had that happen before and I'm uh, learn from your mistakes and try not to do that again. But yeah, warm up set. I'll hold these for like 30 to 45 seconds. I'll show you what that looks like. I won't hold it for the whole duration of time because that's kind of silly. Uh, but after you get the idea, 
I will show you the next session, which is me forcing my wrist into that flex position. And I'll try to get that on camera because it, it's pretty close to my hand. Um, I'll, I'll show you without weight what it looks like, and then I'll try to show you what it looks like with weight. But this is what the warm up set looks like. I just hook these hooks underneath here. And then put my hands, I set my hands in a very nice, like almost full crimpish style of, of pull, and I'll stand up. And as you can see, my hands are in a very neutral position. I'll actually push the pieces of wood into my hips a bit and just breathe in this position and really try to focus on, because these holds are so good that I can almost focus on each individual finger and monitor the pressure that's on them. So if I have too much pressure on one finger, I'll try to shift it over a little bit and just breathe. But right now I'm in a pretty good position and it feels really good. So I'll hold this for 30 to 45 seconds and I'll show you what the next set looks like. So you might be able to see, um, you can see the depth of the hold on my fingers where the pressure is. And it's like a full pad on each of them, which just means the full tip of each finger. And it's a very, very friendly grip. And if you've ever rock climbed before, having no texture sometimes feels really weird, but this hold in particular just feels amazing on the hands. And I just wanted to show you where it was resting on my hands. All right, so now, I'm going to try it in my best to show you the flex position. So when I am holding this and I'm straight like this, my hand is kind of like pushed up against this and it's very neutral and it's just, it's a very controlled position. So what I try to do to engage my wrist flexors and create that, that tendon connection throughout my forearm is push my fingers forward like this, still keeping majority of that like kind of claw-ish grip. So I don't want to like flatten my fingers out because that's risk of injury. I still want to keep my fingers in the same sort of position and just kick my wrist forward. So it's like this. And I just focus, it's kind of like a wriggle because <laughs> as I'm pushing outwards, my fingers do want to kind of flatten out and I want to resist against that to create the uh, strength in the areas that I want to target. And so I'm holding it like this and I just wriggle my hands forward and it's easier to do with weight on because there's something pushing you down in this position and I'll just force my wrist into this position. And it, it's one of those weird things where it's like, unless you try it, it's gonna be very difficult to know what I'm talking about. But that position, as soon as you come out away and you're flexing in that position, you can feel it all the way down. The entire arc of your finger tendon into your I think they're called your lumbricals, which are like the middle of your hand, down into your wrist, and then that goes down into your forearm. And that connection is honestly what I think has increased my hand strength by a lot. And yeah, it's just that neutral claw and engaging all your fingers. Because the weird thing is my thumb is really engaged in this hold. Like I'm actually engaging this thumb flexion while crimping on that. It's not like my thumb is on top of my pointer finger like a traditional full crimp. It's like half crimp kind of open hand and I'm, sque I'm just squeezing like this and I'm holding that position as long as I can. And I think this position is just so healthy when you progressively overload it and that's why it feels so good. And I do this like probably three times a week and it's just felt tremendous, like especially after a climbing session when I'm totally burnt out still staying with the same weight because I want to build that tolerance over time and avoid injury. And then uh, I think next week I will kick this up to 70 pounds um, and see how that feels. I could even do 65 pounds, but I think, you know, if I can hold this for a minute, then I should be able to go up 10 pounds and just drug fest through it. Um, the only thing is though, I might throw in because changing the weight is not very hard but whenever I train grip strength, I try to rotate through exercises fairly quickly. So I don't wanna to have to keep like changing the weight, setting them back up, moving them around, especially because I, I use my hands when moving heavy weight around, because obviously you have to pick it up and, and change the weight. So I want my, my hands to be resting while I'm resting. Like I don't wanna be changing the weight out while I'm resting to train grip strength. And so what I might do is I might throw in a 
finger training warm up or something with some like eagle loops, which are these blue finger loops that if you see these, these are some of my favorite training tools as well because they are also ergonomically shaped. As you can see, they are not in a flat line. When I put my hands or my fingers into these, they are, my two middle fingers are higher than my pointer finger and my pinky. So it just feels, it's that claw strength and that could be why they're called eagle loops because it's like an eagle claw. But I might throw in some just light finger warm ups uh, before jumping to 70 pounds with these. Um, just, just before I, you know, I just don't like making the jump that fast. And so I might do a little warm up prior to and just keep these at 70 pounds. And that could just be grabbing onto a, a semi heavy kettlebell and having that set up over here. So I can warm up with that, rest for a second, and then go straight into my workout with these things. Uh, I'm gonna continue. I got a, some tool, tools for Christmas. Um, my in-laws got me some Milwaukee drills, which I'm super excited about. So I will be using those to build more equipment and try to spice things up and just make different stuff like these, uh, I don't know what you call them, portable hangboards, whatever. We'll just say, say that for now. Um, but yeah, so this is what the uh, next, the forearm flexion work looks like with weight. And it's, I cannot hold this position for 60 seconds. I don't even think I can hold it for 30 seconds, um, but because it's very challenging to flex your fingers forward. But it just depend, depends on how I feel. This is a grip strength focused workout today. Um, I, won't, I haven't done any climbing or anything today. I climbed last night. And so uh, this is what it looks like when I grab onto these. I'll set up the same way as the first one. So nice neutral grip. This is neutral. And then all I'll do is I'll flex my forearms or my top of my wrist forward and I'll hold this position. And this feels really good. Like I can feel it all the way down my fingers and I'll just breathe in this position, hold here. Sometimes I'll even do like bent over engage rows. Obviously that's not a full rep because it gets a little sketchy. I don't want my fingers to like pop or something like that, but that's for another day. But I'll hold in this position as long as I can or till about like 90%. And I can feel it all the way down my hands. And then just put them down, rest for a little bit. Um, I'm not timing my rest times. Um, I would say they're about two minutes between each one of these sets. And I'll repeat this probably like four times. Uh, and then I got a couple other exercises I wanna show you all um, that will help with like Gaston strength or um, there was something else. Oh, and pinch strength. So pinch strength has been one of my weaknesses for a long time. And I'm trying to focus on ways to isolate that in training. And I found a really cool way to do that. So I'll show you that in a second. Oh. There's something about training grip strength when you start feeling it training properly. Because what I used to do is like hang board and try to amplify everything that I would do in climbing, which I think is a good thing, but I always struggled with like skin pain and it was more of like a pain tolerance game, which climbing can be to an extent. Um, it's just, you know, fighting through the pain because we can't control things like our skin burning when our muscles aren't that fatigued. And so when I've discovered that there's holds that are still friendly and you can still use without needing chalk or um, when your skin's on fire and even like so touching wood sometimes makes my skin burn like on a hangboard. Um, I just wouldn't want to train grip. So <laughs> when I found these holds and like these other methods of training, like the forearm flexor extensor warm up, because there's something weird. Whenever I warm up my grip, 
my body is warmed up, like I'm ready to go. I don't know if it's a mind connection because there's so many fine uh, motor units and you ha your brain has to work very hard in order to engage your hands. So then it stimulates everything else in your body because now your brain is awake. That could be it. I, I don't know. But what I'm getting at is whenever you find, and it may not happen to you, it could just be me. I could be just a really weird guy. But there's something fantastic when you, and it almost becomes addictive, when you find a training method that works for you that feels amazing and you're finding and you're seeing the results. And that's what I've found with this grip training. I, it's just when I actually see like, okay, this has been, you know, a weak link in my training and I discovered it through climbing and like, I was like, well, I have such strong pull strength and do pull-ups even apply to climbing? And I know they do, but the bar training is what was holding me back. So now that I've connected this weak link and my hands are getting stronger, now I can pull on stuff that I was really never able to pull before. I can start pinching things that felt like near impossible and I can use that pull strength that I've already acquired through doing weighted pull-ups and different various pull exercises. And it's just, there's something super addictive and super inspiring about it. And that's why like I find myself like having to tell myself not to train grip strength some days because I know my body and my tendons need to rest. But there's, it's just something that, you know, I wish you could experience if you, and if you do, let me know because that would make me feel a little bit better and less psychotic because uh, I am just obsessed with training my hands. Like I want my hands to become rock crushers and this is the first time I've really felt like there's a way to measure and train and progress safely and, and keep that longevity of training and, and just feel strong. Because when your hands feel strong, pretty much everything else starts to feel strong because these are our, this is our you know, human ability is to grab things. I mean, besides, I think, monkeys, like not a whole lot of animals can grab things. And so, I mean, monkeys are strong as heck, right? I want the strength of a gorilla in my forearms, but what I'm getting at is training grip strength and being able to measure it and see the results and then apply those results into uh, a practice like climbing and actually feel the training paying off. There's something that clicks and I'm just, I'm super obsessed with it. And this was just during my rest time, I wanted to share that with you. I have one more set of this and then I'm gonna get into the uh, Gaston and pinch training. If you don't know what a Gaston is, I'll show you what it is in a second. All right. So this one's a little weird. Um, you have to have a pulley machine to be able to do this. Uh, and it's just something that after my grip strength training, you know, my hands are pretty fatigued from that, those isometrics and hangboard training. Uh, I'm taking, this is just a Metolius campus rung uh, hangy thing. I don't really know. I think these are called campus rungs. But anyway, it's got different size ledges on it. The top thing, I don't really use the top thing. I use it mainly for the 20 millimeter and the 15 millimeter. And I just attach this to my pulley machine, but I do it in uh, a reverse way. So a Gaston, when you're climbing, is the ability to hit something from the side and provide, it's like counter compression. So pretend there's like a hold that's at an angle like this, and it's right here in front of me. And so I'm coming from the left to the right and I'm gonna to need to put some sort of pressure on this, but it's, the hand is reversed, right? Usually when we think of basic rock climbing, we're just using our hands like this and climbing like a ladder. So Gaston is side compression. So we're over here, we come up and our hand goes to the side and we are locking in with our lat, our hand strength and pulling ourselves into that hold, but using it as counter compression. So instead of pulling and going to the right like this, I am pulling and just kind of coming into the wall and wherever the next hold might go, this is what a gas on is. It's where you're coming out to the side and your hand is pulling this way to hold compression on the wall. 
Don't know why they call it a Gaston. It could be because Beauty and the Beast and the Gaston's a big dude and it's kind of like a shouldery, powerful move. Could be why. But the way I do this is traditionally, if you wanted to train grip, you would just pull on it and you would hold, you know, one on each side and you'd pull down like this. For Gaston specific training and trying to activate my rhomboids, my traps and everything that surrounds my upper spine, I am holding on to, I'll probably start with the 20 millimeter ledge and work my way down to the 15, just to get a nice warm up in. I'll hold one like this, come underneath, and I'll try to switch. So if I go underneath this time, my next set, I'll go over just to try to balance it out. It's probably not gonna matter that much, but just for my own brain. So I'll hold it like this and you see, I'm basically gonna pull these apart. So activate, so I'll get a nice crimp going, pull these apart and I'll hold in this position. And what I'll do is from a locked out position, try to engage even more. So from here, I'll pull, hold as hard as I can and just isolate in this position. And what you'll notice is your biceps kind of relax and the bottoms of your elbows are taking the brunt of the force right now. So try to engage my spine or not my spine, the muscles surrounding my spine. Come in, out, come in, out. And there's no real rep scheme to this. I'm just holding and trying to relax into it as well as let my hands and my lower forearms do the work because it's a very specific style of training. Um, and I feel that on the bottom of my elbow right here the most. And it's almost like a contraction as well as a stretch because I'll get to a certain point. So I'll do that initial pull and it'll feel like I can't go any further, but then I'll kind of breathe, and relax a little bit. And once I do that, my muscles kind of get out of the way and allow me to go a little further. Because I think in the beginning, you have so many muscles helping support and pull and stabilize like my biceps, they want to engage for some weird reason and help, help out. But once I lock in and I kind of relax, my biceps relax and that actually allows my arm to fold in a little more and for my back to open up more. And uh, weird phenomenon, but uh, I can feel that all the way down my arms. Also a really good connector uh, for the hands, the forearms into the upper back for that Gaston and pull strength. And it just helps with compression. So if you run into like a really tight move and you have to lock off, this allows you to feel and train that, that position while being able to move out of it. And so uh, that's the goal of this exercise. Do about four sets of this, and then I'll show you my pinch training. And I might throw in one more thing, but this should be about it for today. All right, so pinching. Um, one of my weaknesses that I've been trying to isolate and train and I've been feeling much stronger. There's a V10 I've been trying at the gym and there's a huge like kind of like dyno-ish to a large pinch and after one month of you know messing around and trying to do some isolating, um, isolating, isolation, uh, I've been able to stick that move cons pretty cons gosh let me try to get my words together consistently. And um, it's really all just from, you know, taking a pinch, which is just the movement of like, it's not like your grandma pinching your cheeks, it's your whole hand closing like this. And I'm trying to focus, because when I use my fingers, like this is a lot of the motion that I was doing earlier, which is that claw strength and being able to pull my hands in. So my thumb has kind of been my limiting factor here. And so I take these eagle claws, these eagle loops, whatever you want to call them, and I like working out two things at once. I don't like doing arm wrestler stuff where you're doing one arm for half an hour, the other arm for half an hour. I like doing things and saving time. So I'll take eagle loops and I'll put them on either side. And we're gonna do cross bar pattern again. So this one's gonna to go to the other side. This one's gonna to come to this side. And I'll just show you with my left. So I'll grab onto this rail here. And this eagle loop is attached to my thumb right here grab onto this railing and all I'm doing is pinching that thumb forward. And it's kind of hard to not, 
use your fingers to bring your thumb in. Um, it's just a weird movement, but it's this, you can feel it if you try to focus directly on your thumb because your fingers are going to help somewhat with this close. Um, but what I do is I'll go and I'll pump my hand out for like, you know, 15, 10, 15 reps, and then I'll hold the closed position and I'll force my thumb forward and trying to squeeze my thumb into that bar. And that really does the trick on feeling it uh, all the way down my thumb flexor and all the muscles that attach to my thumb. So this is what a set of this looks like. Put my thumbs, try to get my thumbs in like a friendly position or even on both sides, grab onto the bar and then just squeeze. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it started to burn at about 12 reps. So I'll hold here and I'll just close my thumb into that and try to make it so it's touching the bar. And like literally, it's kind of crazy. My right thumb is failing before my left. Good Lord. So that's the sketchy part about this is like you're going until pretty fatigued. I'm not trying to go till failure because I think my thumbs would rip off trying to re-rack the weight. Um, and I'm not trying to get injured, but I think for the most part, this does a really good job of helping uh, isolate and stimulate and tell my brain, okay, I know what muscles I need to use and uh, engage that muscle. So pump it out for like 10 to 15 and then hold that isolation because the isolation is really where you're gonna get the stability work and the strength in the thumb. Um, and this has worked really well for me in developing my pinch strength. And again, this is very new to me as well, um, but I have seen results in the last month of doing this. So uh, it's cool and, and I think there's a lot of ways to do this even if you don't have a pulley machine even if you don't have these. It's just the principle. As long as you can get the principle down using different equipment, it'll all pretty much get you the same result. But I thought this was pretty cool. I have, I'm gonna do some weird pull-ups and I'll show you that because I am gonna try to uh, tie everything together. That's what I try to do at the end of my workouts. So I've hammered my forearms. I actually increased the weight to 70 pounds and I was able to hold those two dumbbells for like 35 seconds. So, yep, progressive overload is working. My hands are feeling much stronger. I remember when I did 50 pounds the first time, I was like really struggling at 30 seconds. Um, but it feels good. Uh, might do one more set of that just because it's super addictive. Two more sets of this, and then I'll go to the pull-up bar and I'll show you these weird pull-ups that I'm gonna do. So these paddles, uh, I don't know what they're called. They're called paddles, whatever. But they are by Kensui Fitness, and they're some of my favorite grip strength, or grips to use when doing pull-ups and uh it's kind of like if you've ever used a mag pull uh lat bar whatever you call it like a row um same thing applies this paddle here keeps your hand nice and uh flat and very ergonomic and you can almost the grip is nice and well-rounded as well but you can push your hand into that which helps create compression when you're doing your pull and it makes the movement feel a lot more fluid so i use these um, like 50% of the time I'm doing pull-ups just because it feels very good on my body. And so I'll put these up in a nice kind of maybe a little bit less than shoulder width. Move some of this out of the way. And the reason these are weird, these weird pull-ups is because <laughs> I'm sitting on this sketchy little seat. What I'm trying to do is work on the top compression because that's where I, I have really good lower pull, like from here to about 90 degrees. And where I start to fatigue in the higher rep ranges uh, is the upper pull. And I think it's because my body is, one, it, it, it's stamina intensive, but two, my body is um, learning how to get muscles out of the way and that's helped from stretching because before I was very muscle bound. So as I started to fatigue, muscles would start to pump up and get in the way of the pull. And I was almost resisting against myself and uh, I was just losing um, energy that way. And this, when you stretch your th muscles and stuff, they're a lot more kind of malleable. And so they, they mold and they move and they get out of the way and they allow you to get full range of motion. 
with less intensity and less effort. So stretching is very important. And I've been stretching for the past like two and a half months now. Um, I switched to every other day because every day was kind of, I was feeling, I started to feel really uh, burnt out from it. So I switched to every other day and I actually got back into the rhythm of looking forward to it. But anyway, this is the pull-ups that I do. I'll grab onto these guys. I'll sit here, so or in a slightly arm bent position. I'd like to be a little higher, but this is as high as my seat goes. And then from here, I'm going to pull as high as I can and then also lift my knees up and kind of do a, a lower body curl. So it engages my core as well. So just like this. And then I'll sit back down, fully release, and then activate that pull again. Try to keep it nice and controlled. Oh, that's pretty good. And all I'm doing with that is one, working on one of my weaknesses, which is the high position, and two, tying everything together because I'm no longer uh, using small holds to do pulling or stationary isolation. I'm now engaging everything. And that in my brain, it's like tying a little bow, a little ribbon on everything. And even though I'm fatigued, it allows my body to under fatigue, realize that everything can still work together. So. When I rest, my body goes through the healing process. I already have the mental note that I don't want to just have strong hands. I want to have strong hands that work with everything. Don't know if this is an actual like research topic or something, but it's what works for my brain. And uh, I have in the last month seen great results because of it. But I'll do a couple more rounds of this. That's all I got for the workout today. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this uh, little session with me. Take care.